two of the uh, PTL Open 2018 Star Wars Armada side event using the Task Force format. Just a reminder that um, Task Force is a 200 point format played on a three by three foot area with a special objective uh, that is unique to this format. That means that every game will be played using this objective. You can see it on the top right of the screen. So round two, we've got Robin versus John. Uh, Robin is a uh, he, he's a player that's known in Armada circles for playing uh, General Maydeen and playing it well. Also known for extremely high bids, playing all ship lists. Uh, opposite of Robin is John. John is a newcomer to the Toronto Armada community. He having just. Uh, gotten into organized play about a month or two ago. Now this matchup is going to be interesting, uh, not only because Robin has issued his traditional rebel builds for a singular ISD Kuat refit as his 200 point list, but also because this is a matchup that they have actually both been practicing in preparation okay. for today. They say it's not going to be very fun because the last two times they played, it, was, it ended up being Robin who won, but um, I think that was from coaching... From me, I think I helped uh, Robin make all the right sure. moves. Whatever. I mean, that sounds like it's probably <laughs> fun for Robin. Yeah, um, but this is going to be big ship on big ship. So where we saw last round, it was uh, a demolisher mirror. Uh, this round, it's going to be an MC80 versus a ISD Kuat. I feel like for some people that play Armada, especially the people that don't like squadrons, like this is what their platonic ideal of what Armada is. Just two big like battleships like well, sailing yeah. past I think each they other. Want, I think they... they want more ships. I mean, I think everyone in Armada always wants more ships. But it's not just more ship. It's not like uh, my dream Armada scenario is three corvettes against your three corvettes, right. right? It's just like two big ships fighting against each other. So the interesting thing about a two hundred point format is that well, so you have these two ships. Um, the uh, distinguishing feature between an ISD and uh, and an MC eighty is. They both have very powerful arcs, but the ISD has a giant front arc that's yeah. very dangerous, and then the, obviously the MC-80 are the two side arcs. Because there's only one ship... Um, well, the MC-80 also has spinal armament, so it's a little bit better in yes. the middle. Yeah, actually, I think the spinal armament is is a slight change. He was running, I think he was running uh, quad battery turrets during playtesting, and he found that even when he was doing the speed one engine tech trick that um, the MC-80s are known to do... Um, he, the opponent would just slow down to speed one. He wasn't able to use his quad battery turrets. So uh, anyway, the the thing I was going to mention is that the the ISD realistically is going to get, get like maybe one pass, uh, right. one or two attacks before it's just going to sail past the MC eighty. Now, Robin, um, Robin not only has an insane bid. I think he has what we said ten point, ten point it's bid, a ten yeah. point bid. And I do Versus believe, a two-point bid for John. Yeah, and I do believe he's going first with uh, with this ten-point bid. Uh, not only that, but he's using Let's Governor up, Price buddy. on his uh, ISD Kuat. And I guess the idea behind Governor Price here is that uh, if if you're going, if you only have one ship that's an ISD with a big front arc, it's quite possible you may only get one good front arc attack, if that. Right. But with Price. Uh, price allows you at the beginning of the game, after you've deployed everything, to select a turn, and on that turn you get to move last no matter what. Right. With the ship that Price is on. Yep. So what he would want to do is he's going to have to pre have to predict when the engagement's going to happen. The turn before the engagement happens is the Price turn for him. Mm -hmm. That way he gets to see where the guy goes. Hopefully it's wandered into his front arc. Mm -hmm. He gets his attack, moves, and then he gets to attack again the next turn. And uh, hopefully that deals enough damage to kill him. Now, MC-80s have a, uh, you know, this MC-80 with electronic countermeasures has, uh, means that Robin can't lock down any of his defense tokens with accuracies yep. because of the ECM. So it's, it's not likely that Robin's going to be able to kill the MC-80 with just one or two shots. Well, yeah. And after that initial joust, Engine Tech's probably going to let the MC-80 come back around a little bit better than the uh, ISD will. Right, yeah. It It's not even so much a... It, you, so it is, you're right, you could come around, try to attack the rear. Uh, another thing John could do uh, is he can move, attack, take one attack from the ISD and then get into the side arc, like turn tight enough to get into the side arc. 
or even jump from long range to close range in the side arc of the ISD with one speed two move plus an engine tech. Uh, those are all things that are possible and it just comes down to positioning and practice as well. I hope you guys appreciate the background music we've supplied for today's Yeah, I think there's a wedding reception happening yeah. downstairs at the Legion Hall we're in. And uh, yeah, we're sitting on top of the stage on the next floor up. The, the other thing I wanted to mention about Robin's list too is that, yes, he has that one ISD, which is kind of all or nothing with the attack. But um, his two squadrons, which are Mornaki and Boba Fett, are there to hopefully finish off a crippled ship. Mm -hmm. as it tries to limp away. The other thing about Boba Fett and Mornaki is that they're also decent enough anti-squadron fighters that if that's the strategy that you need to win, like in this case, maybe what Robin needs to do to win is not attempt to kill the MC-80, but try to kill Han Solo, Shara Bay, and the uh, GR-75 instead. Right. And then try to take the token as well on his way out. That might be enough to secure the win here. I have a bad feeling about how good this audio is going to be. Did, ho ho hopefully, the, hopefully yeah. there'll be speeches. Robin chose Governor Price turn one. That's what he did. Really? Yeah. Actually, that's something we were talking about. Governor Price is a is a is a bit of a high risk card. Yeah. Because if you pick a high enough turn with Governor Price, your opponent can oh, exploit right. that by saying, "Oh, hey, you're not going to activate uh, this guy until the very end." Yeah. So I can exploit that by getting into close range on the turn you go like before you Governor Price. Yeah. And then wait, like I can take my time activating this ship that's right in front of your ISD because mm -hmm. you can't activate until I've activated all my ships and then attack and then get out of your front arc, right? So that's why, that's why um, Robin did uh, turn one price because he wanted to see what his opponent would do. If he waits too long to Governor Price, the opponent also can, uh, has more time to set up an exploitable turn. Yeah. But if you do turn one, you can just be like, well, you only have one turn to, to play around my Governor Price. Well, Robin himself has told me there, there's there been games that he's lost when he's uh, chosen turn three as his Governor Price turn. Yeah. And against like a, a squadron heavy rebel list, that's suicide. So Han Solo moving up to the uh, station. Station's a good place for Han Solo to hide in because uh, Han Solo is just going to wait for Mornaki or Boba Fett to to get within close range or attempt to try to make a bombing run on the MC-80 and then he's yeah. going to jump out and uh, try to attempt to lock him down. I, I hope we've got some Blues fans in the audience. So now with Governor Price out of the way, uh, Robin's going to have to activate first every turn going forward. Because, because John dropped to speed zero, what Robin can do now is he can uh, he can use that to try to maneuver himself into the front arc of that MC30 and put that station between himself and the front arc of the MC30 or the MC80 rather. So while yes, he's going to be getting into the firing range of the MC80 first, and he's going to be the first one to take fire from that MC80 uh, because he has the option of only getting into the weaker front arc of that ship, and he gets to activate first next turn. Uh, maybe going to speed zero wasn't a good idea for John. I, I do think Robin actually, <clears throat> I do think Robin actually ended up taking the token instead of doing the nav command itself, which might actually be a problem because that means that um, if you wanted to do a nav, like he couldn't do a double tick on joint two or three. So with that move, he runs over Han Solo. I can't tell if he ran over Shara Bay. Yeah, Man, he, things move quick in uh, Task Force. Yeah, he he did end up he did end up getting double arced. I think. So GR seventy five activating. Uh, GR seventy five does have a comms net, so he gets to pass that nav command token over to the MC eighty. MC80 just loading up on tokens. Yeah. Now, one thing I hope John uh, remembers that I told him on Thursday is that he has to pick a non-flotilla ship to be his objective ship. I think the oh. last time when they were playing, they were they just assumed that any ship could pick up a right. victory token. But in this game, it has to be the ISD and the MC80 that are the objective ships. 
So John's uh, preparing to activate the MC-80 now. I'm pretty sure it is that double arc. But based on, like, depending on how wide the arc swings um, and where it intersects Robin's ISD, it could be a long range shot instead of medium range. I couldn't hear, I couldn't hear what the main command was, but he ends up using the squadron token. I think he's using it to activate Boba Fett. Or sorry, not Boba Fett, uh, Han Solo. Han Solo, just to tie them up? Yeah. Oh, no, it's not Han, no, Han Solo. Solo. Uh, Han Solo probably went already. No, Han Solo has Rogue. This, this makes more sense. Uh, this is Shara Bay. Shara Bay is a good choice because if you... Oh, yeah. Two hits and an accuracy. Bob Fett has two braces, so he only takes one. Shara Bay is good here because you lock down one squadron. Yep. And Boba Fett's forced to shoot it. But Shara Bay's ability is that when he, she does a counterattack, which is counter three, uh, crits count as hits. Yep. Yeah, there's the roll. That's uh, that's not bad. Yeah, hits the brace, hits the redirect, four damage. Now, one thing I want to point out is that Robin's Kuat refit has uh, reinforced blast doors instead of electronic countermeasures, which is the preferred defensive upgrade of choice on a large ship. Is ECM uh, primarily because ECM is designed to uh, to mitigate against a uh, a big dice pull attack. Right. But Robin is telling me that he, he intends his Kuat to be more... Because of the Kuat's armament has uh, black dice, blue dice, and red dice. So it's a short-range ship. Mm -hmm. He intends on being more of like a battering ram than okay. sort of being like a very defensive sort of thing. Yeah. Which is why he goes for that. So like, I don't know that John has any move here that's going to prevent him from taking more of that for our next turn. I don't think so. Even, even if he goes to speed one with an engine tech... The best thing, the best thing he can do is avoid getting double arc by Ron. Right. But uh, I also want to point out, Robin did something really smart here, which was he maneuvered himself so that when he moves next turn, if he rams, if he rams the MC80, he'll yeah. end up on the station, therefore healing the damage that he takes from ramming. Well, it's interesting thing here is this: John now sit on the station himself. Yeah, I mean. I, I think that's what he does here. Because I don't know, I don't know the two turn, that might be overlap with the ISD, but I think if he just did one, he'd probably be on the station. Yeah, the, the two turn, you're right. If he overlaps the ISD, then he doesn't even get to go on the station because he doesn't actually move at all. I just forgot to set the timer. I think like, what, what, 15 minutes? And past, something like that? Oh, did he found a, find a spot? Yeah, I think so. So he overlaps Han. It looks like what... So I think what he did was he... Uh, well, that's like the best of all world. Well, like the best given this spot. Yeah. He gets double arc, out of double arc, and on the uh, and gets to kill one here. So John was in a similar situation on Thursday where he had this, where he got him double arced. Um, now the problem was he didn't go far enough on the on the turn he when he went into the double arc so mm -hmm. that he couldn't escape the front arc when he attacked then moved the next turn right which allowed john uh, sorry which allowed robin to get a front arc attack and then turn tight enough that he got another front attack right. arc attack the following turn so if i was john what i would do is i would actually um uh actually i don't know Th this situation is a bit different actually because because they're both sitting on the station John has engine techs. He can double ram and heal both damage both times. Oh, that's When he double rams. Uh, so he can might be able to outlast Robin here. They're, they're at the squadron phase now, right? So <laughs> so what, uh, what Robin's going to do is he activated Boba Fett and didn't attack. Because it's going to take more damage. Yeah, yeah. but what B Boba Fett does is when he activates, he gets to choose a squadron or ship at distance one, and it takes one damage. Okay. So Robin was just like, yeah, just three more turns of this and I'll just yeah. kill your guy. <laughs> yeah, so, and then Mornaki is now moving in to help support the ISD to take out the MC-80. What John is probably going to do is he's probably going to maneuver Han Solo close enough so that 
maybe next turn, uh, he's going to use Han's ability to activate first before any anything else activates, jump within close range, and start wailing on Mornaki. I'm not entirely sure who wins a stand-up fight between Mornaki and uh, Han Solo, though. But in the meantime, this is Han Solo doing a uh, attack on the front. Yeah. yeah, a front attack. Are you sure he's just not going to put use Han and try to put a bit more damage into the ISD and maybe yeah. kill it next turn? You know that that might be the case too. Like he, what he could do here is that next turn he could Han Solo activate, do another attack, and then run to the station. So if he runs to the station, that prevents oh, yeah. a Morna Key from locking him down. Yep, and it's also obstructed. If there's enough room on the station for him to sit. Well, I feel like that corner that we can't see that's partially blocked by the ISD, there's just enough space there for one squadron to fit there. You think so? Maybe. Yeah. I, I feel like part of him is going to have to be off the station. Like, he's going to be able to be... Well, another thing is actually... Point. Even, but Morna uh, Key, uh, isn't she heavy? No, she's not, but I just remember... Decimator, regular decimators are heavy. Yeah, but I just remembered that uh, Han Solo has grit. So it doesn't matter if okay. Morna Key locks him down, yeah. Yeah, it's the decimators that are yeah. heavy. Also, I don't think, I don't think Mordecai from where she is can can jump over the ISD at speed three to uh, attack uh, attack Han Solo if he hid in the station. So this is going to be the start of turn three, I think. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. And Han Solo is shooting first or activating first. John asking uh, Robin if Mordecai has grit. The answer is no, of course. John's trying to figure out if he can jump to the other side. What John wants to do here is he wants to jump to the other, to the left side of the ISD. Yeah. And see if he, there's enough space to not be engaged with Morna so he can attack the ISD. And the reason why he wants to go to that side is that he wants to act as a guard for the MC-80 so that Morna Key, no matter where she goes with right. her speed three, she can't. can't escape the engagement range of, uh, of Han Solo. But I don't think it's possible. I mean, what John should do is he should attack before moving. I don't know if he realizes that that's something he can do. Okay, so he, he, he'll he move. He's trying to stay in range. And, yeah, they are engaged. So he, I guess he's going to, I guess he's going to decide to shoot at, uh... Well, no, he... he oh, yes, he is. Key, yeah. So Robin's only ship has a nav command. Yeah, all the shots are going to be... Can you hear Can you hear what they're saying? No. Okay. So, all these shots are going to be obstructed, he says. Uh, Kuat, uh, the Kuat does have external racks, so he, he can make a one giant attack. The thing is, right, he... Uh, well, he, may, he may not get another one, so he... See, the problem is, if only Robin double arc to John, he could use the external racks more effectively, but because John has uh, ECM, like... It kind of dissuades uh, oh, you from making sure. a bigger dice pool when you attack. So this is going to be a front to side attack. Eh, it's pretty middling. He does have does have ordnance experts. Someone's mowing the lawn downstairs. Oh, he does add the he does external racks here. Uses uh, ordnance experts. Yeah, not a great roll. No. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, brace. It doesn't even have to spend ECM here. Robin does have uh, tractor beams on on his ship, so he uses it to slow down uh, John's MC80. So now John's MC80 is at speed one. Which, depending on uh, if uh, what the command John has on the top of his stack, that actually, if he if he didn't put in a navigate command, that might actually be enough to keep uh, keep that ship in uh, the front arc for next turn. Oh, that's interesting. He's trying to actually speed up to get out of get out of range. Yeah, it. it I don't think it, I don't think he can turn tight enough so that the side doesn't collide. Yeah, and if he doesn't move like that, he's just going to fly off the board next turn. I think it's I I think it's in Robin's best interest to just stay put. 
Mm -hmm. Robinson, he actually can't get away from uh, from the ship no matter what he does. He's also conceding that he's actually in a very bad position compared to John. Even with the obstruction, uh, John's rolling, I believe, um, five plus six, seven, eight. Eight dice over two attacks, which can overload the brace defense token. So the, the command, John's command was a uh, repair command, takes it as a token. Really? Oh. Oh, sorry. Uh, on his GR75. So, so he can pass it. Yeah. He hasn't he hasn't activated his MC80 yet. No rush. So John's about to activate MC80. However, he has skilled first officer, which um, <clears throat> allows him to, uh, before he reveals a com command, he can discard the skilled first officer card right. to discard the top dial of the mm -hmm. stack. So it's kind of like if you have two different commands, uh, like first and the second, yeah. you can, it's almost as like an emergency stop right. button to, to replace the command with something different. So if John originally had a, say, repair command or a concentrate fire command, but now instead needs to navigate away from here, he could, and, the, and there's a navigate command under the top yeah. dial, he can use the skill first officer. But he doesn't use the skill first officer. Instead, uh, he's just going to reveal the top, which was an engineering command combined with the engineering, yeah, combined with the engineering token. He gets six uh, engineering points, which allows him to recover three shields. Yeah, now what he's going to do, he's going to double arc uh, the ISD. So he's going to start with the side to front attack. He removes one red die because, uh, yeah, blue die, are, blue die are more consistent. That's actually pretty good. Accuracy the brace, take four. So redirect, going, yeah, going to the left side. So that's three shields gone. That's all the shields gone on the left side, and then one shield gone on the front. So that, I believe, Robin only has one shield remaining on the right side of the ISD. So now here's the front shot. Uh, so it's uh, normally, it's normally, uh, what is it, two blue, one red, and then one red with spinal, and then he removes one now. So he accuracy is the brace again, and... Now with all the shields gone, Robin's starting to take hull damage. So he has one hull damage on his uh, ship now. Yeah, and I think uh, I think it's in John's best interest to just ram. So with the ram, because he ends up on the station, he was the moving ship. He's just going to heal a damage there. Right. Yeah. Well, that's the three hull that uh, reinforced blast doors are going to get rid of at the beginning of the next phase. Oh, you're talking about yeah the Kuat? yeah the three hull damage on the ISD. Yeah. But the, the problem now is, um, I mean, I don't think this is, I don't think that three healing three hull damage is enough to, uh, to do that. So we're on the squadron phase now. Again, Boba Fett activating, but not attacking, dealing one damage to Shara Bay. This is Morna Key attacking Han. Han and, hold on a second. Better just checking with the table there. I, t I told them told them that okay. the uh, black dice were looking a little blue on that roll. Oh, rolls, full blanks, okay. but he gets to re-roll with more key. Yeah, I mean the Another funny thing hits. is same same I, result. I was I was prepared to let it slide just because blue dice are actually less consistent than black dice, and the fact that he rolled three hits, I mean yeah, it's still this is a serious format, guys. So attack I, I, can't, here. I can't tell if the music they're playing is like covers or something, and if we're gonna get hit with a copyright strike. Oh, <laughs> they are all covers. Okay, god damn it. <laughs> covers don't get hit with the copyright though. No, is it like transformative well, well, or something? No, no. Usually, covers will. Usually, they're matching against the, that actual version of the song, so it, it won't be close enough that it'll hit a lot of the time. Okay. Because they'll have like an actual, they'll match it against the recording of the song. Yeah, they'll have like a waveform yeah. of, uh, of the thing. I, I think there's probably plenty of distortion that uh, on this one. We're talking about talking about copyright, uh, copyright on the Armada stream. Yeah, we, we had one video that wasn't, uh, couldn't be played in Germany because of a oh, Paul yeah. Simon song. Oh, I thought it was like, I thought it was like that Nina song, the Red Balloon song. No, no, it was, um, you can call me Al. Okay, I don't, I don't know that song. Paul, I don't even know who Paul Simon is. 
You don't know who Paul Simon is? No. Is that Simon and Garfunkel? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I definitely don't know any of her songs. I know Hall & Oates. You know, you, you would recognize <laughs> Simon and Garfunkel songs and probably some Paul Simon songs as well. All right, where are we at? This is turn four now? Turn four. No more damage on the ISD. Oh, he uh, he used the uh, racks. Or sorry, the the blast doors. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, I'm right there. Right? That's all right. I, he may have forgot to tractor beam again. Although the uh, yeah the um, the MC80 is at speed one already, so you can't tractor beam it down. And I. I don't know if the GR75 is close enough. No, Han's moving. Han's moving and taking yeah. a shot at uh, yeah. the ISD. Also getting a heal. Yep. Off the station. Oh, that's pretty good. Well, uh, yeah, he'll take that. <laughs> Robin said he's never going to get to brace anyway, so he might as well spend it now. So Robin tried to redirect. Yeah, Robin tried to redirect, realized he doesn't have any shields on that ship anymore. So he's like, I don't want to brace. <laughs> Just takes the two, yeah. Oh, wow. I'm surprised that he hadn't, like, I mean, it had to be a while ago, but I'm surprised he hadn't put an engineering at some point here. Well, so this is turn four, right? That nav command was put on turn two. Yeah. So he was like, what? He was like over here, like, uh, the turn after he priced is when he programmed it. I don't think he realized this situation was. Oh, I mean, maybe he never thought that he would. They would get into an impasse like this. He would thought he yeah. would just still be moving on the far side. Yep. So this is a pretty good roll. It gets an accuracy, but uh, that uh, electronic countermeasures is really uh, burning Robin. It's yeah. It's nerfing all his uh, nerfing all his shots, and to add insult to injury, he's only getting the one attack too. So what, John has like the two damage from the Rams? Uh, looks like it, yeah. I guess that would be the only hull damage he took? Yeah, and attempts to take a side attack on Shara Bay with the one blue, gets nothing. And uh, Rams goes nowhere. Another engineering, but banks the token, it looks like. Yeah, I think, I think oh, John... Oh, no, sorry, of course, it's the uh, transport. Right. Yeah, I think John's, John's whole stack at this point is going to be engineering commands. With no shields, the only uh, the only relevant defense tokens that Robin has are the brace and maybe the maybe the contained token. Like I don't think uh, poor Shara's done. I mean, or she will be by before she gets to do anything. Yeah. It it ultimately doesn't even matter if Shara dies or not because if uh, Robin loses his ISD, he gets tabled. He used the skill first officer here. Had a nav token, or sorry, a nav command, and then instead he uh, he reveals the engineering under yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, John now saying like this could not have turned out better for me. He wants to stay there, and he's going to uh, do another double arc, and he's going to get another ram. Another double ram, right? Yeah. He so th this point is where the accuracies get a little bit less valuable, just because. He only has one uh, defense token that's worth locking down, and that's the brace. So out of five total on Robin. Yeah, so he just needs oh, three more. So he's going to brace down to two. That puts him at eight, uh, seven, I think. Seven damage. Yeah. And then the ram's going to bring him to eight. So he has uh, three more damage on that ship. Robin's saying he's going to die next turn. Meanwhile, I don't think Robin's actually done any uh, any hull damage to the MC-80, right? Or am I wrong about that? When the, well, hasn't... Uh, isn't the ISD ramming it? Yeah, but every time he's ramming the ISD, the uh, MC-80... Well, I guess... The, no, the ISD I ramming the MC-80, right? Yeah, yeah. So when the ISD rams the MC-80, every time that happens, he takes one. So that's why I assume there's the two rams yeah, that yeah. he has hull damage. But, but he's still got like a whole bunch of shields. Like, I don't think it's... I don't think it's going to matter. No. So we're in the squadron phase now. It 
Robin's saying he doesn't want to attack with Bubba because he knows that if he gets, uh, if Sharpay gets counter attack, unless he roll, she rolls three accuracy, she's just gonna die, or Bubba's gonna die. But doesn't he just activate and does one more? Oh, she has four health. You know, he he does it right. Like that's what he did. Yeah, yeah. He just doesn't want to attack as yeah. well. Sorry, I thought you only had three health. Um, I was my mistake. Yeah. I know the uh, the A wing aces are all, all have four health compared to the Tie Fighters. So Sharbay attacks, deals one damage. The crits don't uh, deal damage on a regular attack, just counter attack. I guess Sharbay might not even die here, because um, we could get to do a squadron activation with uh, the transports. Yeah. I, so Boba Fett's at one, right? I'm not sure, but one or two. Looks like it. So Robin's Robin's talking about how this this game was massively boring because it's just two ships talking to each other. Yeah, it's 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 interesting in the sense that like I think both players uh, thought that they had the superior bullying position, mm -hmm. and it just turned out that. You know, as I was saying at the beginning of this match, uh, one of the concerns about Price activating it too late can get you into a position where the opponent can exploit it. Yeah. But this might be a situation where... Han gets a, a hit. Yeah. One more damage. By, by John uh, dropping to speed zero, um, refused to play the game when Robin set Price to turn one of... Yeah. Oh, hey, I'm going to move, and then I'm going to move again, and then you're going to jump me and then attack me first. Right. By going to speed zero, he forced Robin to jump to speed three and go all the way across to his side of the board. So do, do see an engineering command now. Put some shields in the front. But yeah. why, why bother? You, don't you need to heal a damage because you're going to ram? Uh... Well, yes, but if you're being incredibly optimistic, two shields is better because the the uh, the dice from John Chip can only attack his front arc. Oh, uh, the, the, yeah. I yeah no, I just assumed he only had one more health left. Uh, who oh, he has nine damage. Well, Sorry, I thought he had. Uh, yeah, he had. Well, he had what? Uh, yeah, I thought, he, I thought he was at ten, more. not nine. I think this will be the coup de gras. Yep, engineering command. Oh, he's attacking the big ship. I guess, yeah. That's enough. Even Four. the brace? Oh, yeah. Throw away the brace. No, he had the two shields on the front. Oh, he had the two shields. Yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. Sorry. So he just needs to deal one damage here. Yeah. Because then he could just ram right and kill yeah. it. And uh, since this is the only meaningful ship... There'll full, be a, yeah, it'll be a tabling. Full points for... Um, yep. John? Uh, not a... Oh, it doesn't matter. It's because it's a table. But. Yep. Why does it matter? Well, the, because he wanted to kill uh, oh, right. Boba Fett before the squadron phase, yeah, so right. Boba Fett had a ch kill couldn't kill Shara and then not make it a complete 200-0 victory. <laughs> uh, can't Morna still try? Uh, oh, no, no because no Morna... Yeah, see, it's the curse of the black.